As a sort of 16, 17 year old, early days of digging type of DJ in South London, you'd go in and you'd see these records by an artist called Sun Ra and all these different variations of his name and his different groups. And it was just quite mystifying and quite curious for me as a collector, not a collector really, just as someone who's just, I mean, early days of uh, if you see Sun Ra records, you know, it's quite it's fascinating, isn't it? And for me, I pick up his records and listen to them. And what I noticed initially wasn't really the music. The music was confusing to me. It was more the, the, the sound effects and stuff that I felt I could put on top of what I was doing as a DJ at the time. I suppose the record that probably first captured me by him, and it still is a brilliant record to use as a DJ, is uh, Space is the Place. Space is the Place, the album, and I also did quite a lot of stuff using music from the film as well. So a lot of the um, original ST, the, you know, the OST of Space is the Place, the film itself, it's so brilliant, it's so full of musical nuggets and spoken nuggets and, uh, and then also Joyful Noise. So, you know, between those two films and Space is the Place, I really kind of got my, got my teeth into the Sun Ra experience. I am the outer destiny. I am the outer destiny, the presence of the living myth. What is the power of your machine? Music. When I was uh, probably late teens, early 20s, I was going to college for a little bit in the West End, in Soho. And at that time, you could become a member of Ronnie Scott's for I think about 20 pounds, 25 pounds a year annual membership and for that you could get in Monday to Thursday after the second set for the second set at 10 o'clock in the evening it would start around then you could go and own for a quid I think or a couple of quid so I used to go every night Monday to Thursday to go and see Art Blakey to go and see Chico Freeman to go and see Ira Kira and one of the groups that always used to perform like annually for two weeks for stints proper stints at Ronnie's was Sun Ra and it got to the stage where I was running uh, my second record label, which was Talking Loud. And I'd done Acid Jazz, and then, um, yeah, Talking Loud was the second label. And it got to the stage, I was so obsessed by seeing Sun Ra, and I was so obsessed by the theatrics and the whole show, more than just the music, the whole way of presenting music within, I suppose, a jazz club context. I used to make sure that all the bands and artists that I was going to sign to the label, it was a kind of unsaid rule that if you signed a contract to talk and add, you had to go and spend an evening with me at Ronnie Scott's watching Sun Ra. Beyond mm. the music, it was, uh, was theatre. They'd come in, they, they'd be dressed up in Egyptian type of, you know, pharaohs or whatever their thing was at the time. There was always a lot of that. And I just remember June Tyson. For me, it was all about June Tyson and then him coming in and sort of laying himself behind the keyboard. But for me, June Tyson, you know, she was the mystical one. And I wish I'd have actually spent some time. I mean, he was, of course, but she was just this incredible singer. And I think if you look at singers these days, you're like, you know, whether it's people like Georgia Ann Muldrow or or Erica Badu, you can really feel that line, you know, where where June Tyson comes into it all, somewhere between Billie Holiday, Abby Lincoln, 
and 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 Georgia Ann Muldrew. A better day is breaking. The galaxies are waiting. The planet Earth is waiting. Oh, we sing this song to a great tomorrow. Oh, we sing this song to a body sorrow. The thing with Sun Ra and doing this collection was just the fact that I'm listening, you know, it, it makes you reassess your collection. Because of course you don't listen to it all the time every day. And so I hadn't listened to some of his records for, for a while. And every time I listen to him, I always hear something new. Music changes, music fashion changes and production changes. And so certain Sun Ra records might not be as relevant now as they might be in another time, but there's always a song by Sun Ra which fits the current mood. For me, the aim of this record was to go, okay, Sun Ra is a very diverse artist. I've shouted about him to everybody, played him on the radio. He gets me through good times. There's always a mystery about something that he's done. There's always this extra-ness about his music. And I want that all to come through on this opportunity that I've got. I, I looked at this double CD as a little bit of something which goes through his career from the 50s. Um, but equally, I wanted it to be something that I could imagine playing in that sense in a club. And I think that, you know, I'm looking forward to doing it, actually. I've been playing quite a lot of it out. You know, it's good. It's all right. It's past the Peterson seal of approval. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>